I recently took my first ever trip to Seoul, South Korea. I wasn't totally sure what to expect, but I found a beautiful country with a rich culture just waiting to be explored. Today, I want to help you plan your trip to Seoul by breaking down everything I feel you may need to know. We'll start with arriving and getting settled in, and then move into exact day trips you should plan. Get your notes ready, because this is everything you need to know to travel Seoul, South Korea. Before you ever even jump on a plane and start your journey, you need to know which time of year is best. The winters in Seoul are very brutal and last from December to February. Summers are brutally hot and last from June to August. The best time to come is either spring, which goes from March to May, or autumn, which is from September to November. Korea is not as expensive as you may think. It can absolutely be a budget-friendly location. I recommend using Airbnb to get the best bang for your buck. If you've never used Airbnb, please trust me, it's not as sketchy as it may sound and it will save you a lot of money. As far as saving money goes, the subway system is the best way to do it in Korea. It's very cheap and you can get basically anywhere. Or use a bus if you're not in the city center. Never use a taxi if you can help it. It's a great way to throw away money though. When you arrive in Seoul, you'll most likely fly into the Incheon International Airport. We just arrived in Seoul at the Incheon Airport. Once you make it through customs and immigration, you want to either exchange your money or get cash from the ATM. You will need it. Don't worry if you don't know Korean. All the signs have English written on them. Follow the signs to get to the trains. Look for the vending machine that sells these cards. This is your T-Money card. You can use this for a lot of things, but most importantly, it will let you use the trains and the subways. Go to the machines right next to where you picked up the T-Money card. Click the English option and just follow the steps to put money on your card. You can only recharge them with cash. This is why you need to make sure you have some. Use the airport's Wi-Fi to download the app called Kakao Metro. As long as you know which subway station is closest to where you're staying, this app will tell you exactly which trains to take and when you'll need to transfer. Kakao Metro is absolutely essential when traveling around Seoul. Watch the times when you're planning to use the subway. If you go during morning or afternoon rush, it's gonna be packed. Like, you don't understand how packed. Also, don't sit in the pink seat on the trains. This is for pregnant people. Buses are also a great way to get around. I recommend using Google Maps or Kakao Maps when you're planning to take a trip that needs buses and it'll tell you the exact numbers of the buses you need to take. I will be honest, this is confusing to me for some reason and I found it very easy to take the wrong bus. So just make sure you're paying attention. I really recommend you learn about the recycling in Korea. They separate everything out much more than a lot of other places do. So do some research on this because you will be required to do it. Another great way to save money is to go to convenience stores. If you've never been to Asia, you may not know this, but they have much more for sale than Western countries. You can find most anything you'll need for your trip at a pretty good price. Wi-Fi is everywhere in Korea. As far as phones go, unless it's essential for you or you'll be there long term, you really don't need to get a SIM card for your phone. You'll always be close to a place where you can get connected. Random tip, but if you do know some Korean, try using the Yogio app for delivery. It's very popular in Korea. Okay, let's get into the things you should actually do while you're in Korea. I'm giving you enough to fill a good week to two weeks in Korea. If you need more to do, just ask around once you're there. The best place to find what to do in Korea, believe it or not, is from Koreans. Let's start with the things you can actually do in the city itself, and then we'll move into some day trips. If you're interested in a more traditional style of Korean travel, head to Gyeongbok Palace. Originally built in 1395, this is a fantastic place to get a traditional Korean feel and it's just beautiful. From there, you can see the Bukchon Hanok village and go under this big statue to see the history of how the Korean writing system, Hangul, was created. This can all absolutely be done in one day, but be ready for a lot of walking. You may also want to rent the traditional Korean clothing known as hanbok. If you're wearing this when you arrive at the palace, you'll get in for free. If you're more interested in seeing 21st century Seoul, head to Hongdae. Here you can find endless places to eat. Try Korean barbecue and the Korean fried chicken. This is also a place where you can go to cat cafes, raccoon cafes, lemur cafes, and who knows what else. We ended up in a cat cafe and had a blast. Hongdae is also a great place to get some shopping done. If you're into fashion, there are more than enough stores to make your way through. One we really liked was called Playground. If you want to shop for makeup, try Olive Young. They're on like every corner in Korea. You can't miss it. If you're into it, check out escape rooms and VR. These things are very popular in Korea and can be found all over the city. If you like gaming, look for PC bonds. For a very cheap price, you can play as many PC games as you want 
order food, and just hang out. If you like K-pop, look into signing up for some K-pop dance classes or going on a K-pop tour. You can find them with a quick Google search. For karaoke, look for Norebong. This is always a great time with friends. All of these things can be done in Hongdae if you want to make a big day trip out of it, but most of them can also be found in other areas of the city as well. Just keep your eyes open as you're exploring. Something else worth checking out in the city itself is the Han River. It's very popular to camp overnight there. So if that sounds interesting to you, look into it. Something else by the river that we enjoyed was the Goblin Night Market. This happens every Friday and Saturday night from April through October. Finally, my favorite thing to do in Seoul is going to Namsan Tower, also known as In Seoul Tower. If you're a fan of K-drama, you've probably seen this before. It's a huge tower that sits on a hill that overlooks all of Seoul. For only around $10 US, you can take the elevator to the top for the most breathtaking view of Seoul you can get. I really feel that this is a must do for anyone visiting Seoul. There's obviously a lot more things you can do in the city that I didn't get to do, but this is everything I got to see in the time I spent there. Now for the bigger day trips. Personally, these are my favorite things to do because it really feels like an adventure. Nami Island, Petite France, and Garden of Morning Calm can all be done in one day if you start early enough. Sadly, I didn't, so I only saw Nami Island. This is a beautiful island known for being a filming location in the K-drama Winter Sonata. Even if you aren't a fan of Winter Sonata, this place is a must visit in Korea. You can either zip line in or take the ferry. You'll be surrounded by nature, see animals like ostriches, and so much more. You should also look into Petite France and Garden of Morning Calm as well. I really wanted to go see these since they're pretty close to Nami Island, but I just ran out of time. Guess I have a reason to come back though. If you're into history or just stunning views, visit Suwon Hwasong Fortress. Built in 1794, this is basically a huge wall that surrounds central Suwon. Trust me, this thing is so much bigger than it looks in pictures. If you plan to walk around the whole thing, which I personally think you really should, this will have to be a day trip. Finally, one of my favorite things I did during my entire time in Korea was visit Everland, the biggest theme park in all of South Korea. Go early in the morning and try to get there for opening because you can easily spend an entire day there. From riding roller coasters to visiting the zoo area where you can go on mini safaris to see tons of amazing animals you've probably never seen before, or visit the garden which is still one of the most beautiful gardens I've ever seen. This isn't even mentioning Caribbean Bay, their water park, which I didn't get to go to, but I heard it's also a blast. If you love theme parks, gardens, or just wanna see some amazing animals, Everland should absolutely be on your list of things to do in South Korea. Obviously, there's so much more you can do in Korea, but this should be a great list to get you started. If there's something you absolutely love that I just missed, please leave it in the comments so people planning their own trips can see it as well. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you wanna see more stuff like this and share this video if you like it because that helps me more than anything else. I'll see you in the next one.